Halloween's over. It's time to clean up this mess here pretty soon. But first, I want to get things started with you guys here. And, and maybe I'll, I'll clean up the Halloween mess during the live stream that I'll, I'll do pretty soon here. But I brought you over here to these houses because this episode is actually going to be about houses, specifically filler houses. Now, when I say filler house, what do I mean exactly? Well, there, there's there's nothing really on the inside. It's just kind of clean, not decorated, plain, nothing special going on. But we want to build a lot of these houses to fill in the areas that we need to fill in. Filler houses can actually play a really good role in your town because they're gonna fill in empty space where you don't have any kind of buildings. Now, you could easily apply this to medieval, but you could probably apply this to other types of um like genres of like base as well, or maybe even different types of bases where maybe it's not houses, maybe they're filler buildings, right? But regardless, we have a lot of area to fill. We got some houses over here, this whole area going down through here. Uh, we got two rows of them right here by the entryway. And we even have some back here and some like more upscale, up class houses here. And there's actually some really good strategies that I've learned in my time putting filler, filler houses in here and here that are going to help you be able to do your own filler houses in a very quick easy and good looking manner. And I have actually tried out numerous processes to see what the best route was. One of them I tried over here was to just build a whole house, bottom to top, and then move to the next house, build the whole house, bottom to top, right? And over here, I tried something a little bit different. I actually did everything in sections. I laid out all the foundations, then I did all of the framework for each of them just to see how tall, what kind of variety I was gonna have, etc. Um, then I laid out the roof to see what type of roof styles I wanted to use. And then I started to fill in. I filled in the walls. I filled in the roof. And then we added all the decoration. And then finally, we added all of the exterior like landscaping type things. And this process I have found to be the best. So if you're going to be going through and building a bunch of filler houses all at the same time, this is the process I would recommend. Why is it more efficient? Because you're only like dealing with the same resources at any given time. So for example, and what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna go out and lay foundations, which actually won't take any one particular resource. It's going to, we're just gonna you know, take a random block in here, probably cobblestone or something, and then actually lay out the shape, the foundation of each house. This will allow us to get the spacing proper, how many houses we're gonna be able to fit in here, the size of them, etc. We get to make all of those decisions at the same time, which makes it a lot easier. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start from the side that has a more hard border to it. In this case, we got the road right here. And then I get to decide how close I want it to the road and to the backside here to the wall. And I think actually what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna get rid of all of these markers. And now that we've got all that out, we can start to actually lay out our houses. And I don't know, I feel like since this is right by the gate entrance, maybe I don't want it like completely crowding this house, this, uh, the house out like all the way to the edge, right? So maybe I'll give myself just a little bit of space and we'll start our first house somewhere like right about, I don't know, maybe right about there. This will give us several blocks over this way of space. Maybe I even move it over one like that. Just to give us several blocks here. Cause I don't know, maybe I want to put something here by the gate or maybe I'll just put like a tree or something right here just to give some type of like blockage between here and here. Um, and then now it's time to just really figure out like what styles and sizes and things like that that we want to use. Um, also, like I have a lot of space right here. So how about instead of starting from the back side here, since we have quite a number of blocks to go, let's start from the front. Let's start from like right here. And then these houses will vary in terms of the length, the width, how close they are to the road, how close they are to the wall. Some of them will be singular. Some of them will be duplexes. And this first house, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit on the larger side. So we're kinda, kinda going with something that's about five by seven here, or nine by seven, I'm sorry. And then we wanna add in a little bit of shape to this in some way, just to make it a little bit different. Cause this one right here is also pretty rectangular. I think it drops down a level, but it is a, a rectangle, whereas maybe all of my other ones aren't exactly like that. So how about we add in like a little like, I guess be some type of like a cutout for a porch or five like this maybe. 
and it doesn't have to be anything super fancy. I think that'll that'll really do a trick, right? And then back here, I think I kind of want to do a style like I did over there where the front of the house overhangs, right? So we'll have like an overhang part that probably comes like all the way, let's put a three block gap between them. I have an overhang part. I'm just going to kind of mark that off by that. And then the actual like ground foundation portion and we're just going to keep doing this until we, we finally make our way all the way back, right? Because we, we have all of this space to kind of work with. And this is kind of what we've come up with. I've gone through and, and just applied the same process to a couple of different houses. Here's the first one we did. Here's the one I did. It's going to have some sort of an overhang. Um, and then we added in a like a multi-unit dwelling. So a lot of times in the medieval times, a lot of people would build their houses together, like just build straight off of another one. So they wouldn't always necessarily be straight or look like they go together, maybe even be in different styles and different materials, kind of like I did over there a little bit. So um, that's something that we can work with. Then we added another one over here into the corner, which will be a duplex. It's kind of like divided diagonally here, which should be interesting for me to work up and do. Now I might tweak these a little bit, um, and you'll see that the Halloween decorations are gone. I went through and did a stream and got rid of all of the Halloween decorations, except the graveyard. The graveyard's still down there in case anybody wanted that in the uh, world download at the end of the season. But what we need to go through and do now is, again, maybe tweak these a little bit. So now that we have all our foundations in, I, I tweaked some a tiny bit, but really not a whole lot. It's time to do our wireframing. So wireframing is really just quite simple. We're going to decide... For example, how tall this house is. So we'll, we have it at one block now, two, three. Three is good for like a head height. And then maybe the fourth block would be your ceiling height. So I think we're gonna do something like this right here. And all we're gonna do is kind of do like all the corners like this, and then we'll go through and connect them together. And then that'll be our wireframe done for this house. Some houses are a little bit easier than others are. So this one's the kind of easy one. And then next we're gonna move to a hard one that I really don't even know what the heck I'm gonna do with it yet. And the other way we're gonna do here is the triplex where we have three different houses connected together. And just like we varied, the uh, like the footprint, like some are forward, some are back, some are different shapes and sizes, etc. We're going to vary the heights as well. So I guess let's start with this one and we're going to start from the higher side, the back side here. And, and this guy is like a decent like vertical or not vertical, a decent like um, a decent like size in terms of like overall like floor space. So we're just going to we're going to make this one a one story house. So we're going to one, two, three. And I think that'll be good. One, two, three. And then the front side, we need to do one, two, three, four to compensate for the fact that we're one spot lower. And then next we're gonna come over to what is going to be the corner of this house. And this one right here is gonna be our two story home. I don't quite know. These can be kind of tricky to do just because of like when you have two houses that kind of like mesh together. So let's see what we could do here. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. We might go six. Let me see what five looks like first. It's five from that back side, so it is six from the front here. And then I guess let's do this. We'll, we'll bump it over this way, do this side. All right, and now we got the second one here, and this one again is gonna sit kind of low, so I think I'm just gonna like grab it from right here. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. Awesome. And we're just gonna go ahead and connect all these, and that'll be the wireframe kind of done. It looks like a little bit of a mess now, but we don't have to worry too much about that yet, because the next thing we're gonna wireframe out after I do off camera, these like last couple, is we'll actually wireframe out or trace out a roof for them. The roof is going to be, at least for me and probably for most people, the hardest part. So before we go through and finish all of the details and fill in all of this, we'll actually end up doing the roofing to it first. That way, if we find that some kind of a shape is just something that for whatever reason we can't work with, like we can't figure it out, then we don't have to rip down a built house to then adjust the roof we can just adjust the wireframe to make things work in a way that's going to be fitting for a roof. 
after a lot of work, especially this one right here, took a little bit of time. Um, I actually came up with a cool idea because this this top area was actually so large that I was kind of worried about what I was going to do with it. So first, I actually lowered the floor here to again, just kind of work on like separate planes and just be different than the other buildings. So this one actually goes down into the ground a little bit. I almost punched that wolf, which would have been bad. This this area is actually kind of large up here. It was a little the, the larger side. So I actually I didn't even finish it all. Look at this. Look, I am so I apologize greatly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm wireframing this out to be two separate units, right? So like this, like this, I think that's right. Are they the same size? They don't have to be exactly the same. They're close to the same size. And then we'll have a doorway right here, a doorway right here, and then two small houses up here. So we actually have two triplexes here. We have one that's on two separate floors and we have one that's just all like connected houses going down the road, which is really awesome. We have a lot of variety here, which is really cool. The next part of variety we need to get in though is the roofing. Just kind of like you saw I did over here, we did different roof styles for different houses and they don't always have to be all different. You can have a couple of like the same ones side by side, which is fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna outline the roofs and I'm gonna outline them in the type of block color block that I think I'm going to use. Let me get some materials on me because we want to add some varieties. We kind of go down through here. We don't want everything to look exactly the same. It's okay to reuse some stuff, but we don't want to have like everything be spruce. So I'm going to grab those materials and then we're going to outline a couple of roofs. Okay, and as I've sat here, like thinking about the roofs a little bit before we get started, I actually even adjusted things a little bit more. I, I kind of took this that was down here and I slid it over. So again, that's why I tell you wireframe things out first. Don't build the whole base and then decide you're gonna slap the roof on it because you might decide as you're looking at the roof, you wanna do something a little bit different and that's gonna mess you up. So I decided for this house as just as our first example, I wanted to do prismarine for the roof. So that's what I'm gonna do, right? I'm just gonna kind of outline things for now. So we're not gonna go through and do it all. Um, but what we wanna do is get a good shape on this roof. So then we can kind of tell and see what it is that we're gonna be dealing with. So we're gonna go through and, and bring this roof to a point. We'll put like a slab up here, I think, and that'll be fine. And now I kind of know how far in and how high that comes. And then I could do the same thing over here. I think I wanna have the roof just kind of face like the same as that one does. So that's going to mean, I don't know if I'm gonna like curve this one in or not. I'll have to kind of see how it's gonna work out. I guess, I guess it is gonna curve in as the blocks just like to connect sometimes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this one off first. We can kind of take a look at it and then see what adjustments we may need to make because we might need to make adjustments. Okay, so this house outline is all done and it's looking really good. And that's all I'm gonna do for right now is outline it because I, I kind of want to stay within the same like, I, I'm, I'm in I'm in designing roof mode. I'm not in completing roof mode, right? So you kind of want to keep in the same mind track because it's going to help you out with planning things. So now that we've outlined this roof and for the most part, I know what I'm going to do with it. We're going to do something with this. And I was trying to think like, what exactly am I going to do with it? And it's kind of fun sometimes to make your house or your building, your structure, have some type of story, right? So the story to this one is, is that it started out as a, um, just a bottom level, uh, like maybe a two story house. I don't know. I don't know the whole story. Okay. I'm not, I'm not a great storyteller, but it started out as a house that like, it was maybe two levels and they were all built at the same time. Um, and then this little front portion here got added onto it, or maybe the whole top got added onto it. Now I'm changing my story. Okay, so I kind of figured out the rest of the story here. So the story to this house is that it was a single unit dwelling down there. And then these two units up top were added after the fact. Maybe it was a family member or a friend or something. It was like, hey, like we want to live in the town, but there's no room to live here because the rest of the town is full. Can we just build on top of your house? And the mom down there, whoever it is, is like, yeah, sure, go ahead. So they built this up here, right? So the roof would have got taken off. The top level is going to be made of a different material than the bottom level, probably. But the roof is going to be consistent across the whole thing. So I was thinking what we would do is we would start out with kind of just a standard pitched roof like that. Maybe starting out somewhere here ish. You know what we should do? I should probably sh do I need to frame this house out? No, we're not going to. No, we're not. We're not going to frame this one out. We'll do that with the next one. Um, so we're going to have a roof that would start, let's say, like right 
here-ish. And then we'll outline it going around this way. And then this part's actually going to come up right here. So it's not going to go all the way across because I thought what might look cool. And again, just kind of like you want to break up your sight lines a little bit and just add like additional levels of interest to stuff. So what we're going to do is we cut off the roof here and that's going to give us space to make a like there would be like a loft in the top story of this house here. And there would be a little doorway that would come to this like little patio porch whatever type area that could like overlook part of the town. I think that would look really cool. So we're going to go ahead and get this roof outlined to tell that story. OK, so this one's all done. We've outlined the roof again. We'll get to the smaller details a little bit later. Now we want to go ahead and outline the roof here. But I'm going to need to consider one specific thing with the roof on this one, which is the fact that I want to like have it be a little bit different. I want it to maybe protrude out a little bit further and have a slightly different look. So I think for these two lower houses, we're going to actually add in these support beams here, which is actually going to allow us to bump out our roof a little bit further on both of them. And then it, well, also it's going to give us a kind of cool like entryway to this house right here, which is going to be neat. And then for the, um, I guess like this one right here, like we may do like a flat roof or something on top of that one just to again like mix things up a little bit i could i could change things here as well because we we may even like we could do something like a standard sloped roof for like this one or this one on one of these two sides right and then maybe on the other side we could do like a slanted roof or something i don't know like the shorter one here would maybe make a good slanted roof i'm not sure we're going to we're going to start drawing this out. This is why we trace things. We're going to start tracing things out and we're going to play around a little bit. OK, so we've we've traced out our first roof, which we have over here. It's just a standard pitch roof, which I've done a few of now. And I want to switch things up a little bit. So I think this top one right here is going to be a flat roof. And then I'm, I'm going to fall off of there because, of course, that's what I'm going to do <laughs> over here. I think we're going to have like a slight pitch roof. Right. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to like just like ever so slowly, like pitch ourselves up right here like this. And then maybe even to the point where, where, where can I place this? Let's go like this and we'll go like over two. I think will make sense because I don't want a big pitch here because then it's going to like, I want it to look significantly different than the other two roofs here. I don't, I don't know why I want it to look so different, but I do. I think coming across like this and then we need to get to that point right there, right? I don't know why I did two right there uh, like this will take us in exactly where we want to be. Now, what I don't really know or understand yet is how all this is going to actually mesh together. So we're going to have to kind of gauge that a little bit, but that's just kind of part of the process is not knowing how all of them are going to come together until you step back and look, which again is why we're doing these like wireframes. I think that might actually look kind of good. Um, how did I tie things in together over here? So basically, like we would take this like right here and we would just run that up higher to connect it sort of like this. So now we got that connected up and then we'll, we'll do some other fancy things to kind of like, sh oh, yeah, that last part, just erase it from your memories. It never happened. <laughs> but now we do have a plan on all of the uh, all of the roofs except for this one i'm gonna go ahead and do that one off screen because we've done these ones on screen um and what i'm gonna do after i finish that one is is i'm just actually i'm gonna fill in the roofs so we have our roof colors all picked out and that's gonna help us pick the colors for our base which is gonna be the next portion okay now with the roofs filled in i haven't done the flat part yet because i'll kind of wait until i get the walls up for that but with those filled in now it's time to figure out what you're going to be doing for your walls your base material for the walls for each one of the houses that you've made and i try to both mix things up maybe not put the same material side by side although if you do it every once in a while it's not that big of a deal like we have uh spruce here and spruce here and also try to mix mix it up like across too um, again, you don't have to do it that way. That's just how I'm doing it with my town, but I'm using materials that are consistent with the rest of my town. 
So this is going to be the first time I've used terracotta in a regular sized house, but I've used it for some shops. So I thought I would use it a couple times. Um, we're, we've been going with a number of different stones and then spruce wood has been used a numerous amount of times here. Uh, we've used some deep slate. I don't know that we've used it for a whole house before, but it's definitely a material that is prevalent in the town. And then we got some oak. We got some more. And we got some more terracotta right there. So we've got a, a good, healthy mixture of materials here that hopefully doesn't look too busy when we go through and like everything being different. Some of them are just repeats of what's over here, just at a different location over here. So I'm going to go in now. I'm going to fill in all of the base materials and then we'll do a walkthrough before we do any kind of detailing just to see how we like it. And then if we like it. Then we're going to move on to starting to add some type of like details to the structure, maybe do some tweaks of some things after we get to see what they look like, etc. Another tip, which I just did and everything worked out pretty good, but I've kind of wanted to show it off was I, I, it looks like I filled everything in, right? Wrong. <laughs> I only filled in one side. I wanted to see what things looked like with these blocks in next to everything else and next to each other. So basically, I just kind of like filled in one side. So like this whole sight line as I walk by would look complete in terms of just like the build block that I've used. And I think it's turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Only one I changed was I realized I put oak here and I had oak in the roof. So I decided to change that and I just went with stone brick again. We have stone brick in a couple other places and even like black stone brick here. So I thought it would be good for maybe that to be a more like common building material that's going to be more prevalent in a lot of our houses. Like it's probably good to have a couple that show up maybe more often than the others because they're more readily available to get from the, the stone smith down there. So stone smith, whatever his name is, um, the stone cutter. And then we'll have other ones that are kind of hodgepodge mixed in because, you know, those are just other materials that were available that those homeowners bought for whatever reason. It was cheaper to get at the time. The stone wasn't available, whatever the case may be. But now that I know I'm happy with it, now I can go in and fill in the rest. And then we can start talking about doing some basic like structure detailing. And just one little part here that I wanted to show was like when you have these connecting houses and you're kind of wondering like, well, what's the divider wall going to be? Because we have a, a house here and we have a house here. I don't know how to divide things up. It's really best to just decide which house was there first. Assume that one was built first and the other was attached to it whenever you're using two different materials like this. So in this case, the brick one was here first, stone brick. So I'm going to go ahead and just I'm going to lay down stone brick. And then would the inside of this house look a little funky because there's stone brick in there when the rest of it's the um, terracotta? Yeah, but that's what you get for building your house onto somebody else's house. OK, now we're at the stage where we want to start detailing more, a little bit more house by house rather than doing all of them at the same time. So the next phase of this is going to be detailing the exterior of your house. So adding in doors and windows, putting in little bits and bobs on the walls and the ceiling and adding in porches and stuff, kind of like we've done with some of this here. We're not going to do landscaping yet because I like to do that last. We're going to go through and we're going to do all of these little details to each house individually. I've done these in videos in the past, so I would go back and check some videos where I've built other buildings. So I'm not going to walk you through the actual detailing process. So I'm going to go through now and we're going to get some detailing done and then we'll we'll move on to the next step. And the detailing is mostly done. Um, I say mostly because on another episode, maybe the next one, I don't know. We're going to do an episode on realistic lighting and we'll be using RTX for that just to like really show people how like RTX lighting can bring stuff to life and also we'll like spawn proof things and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, we got some nice details hanging around on outside of pretty much all of these houses. Um, I do need to do some like plants and stuff like that, which is actually what we're going to do next, because once you have all of your detailing in, now is time to add in your shrubbery just to kind of fill in all the gaps that your detailing don't really touch to make everything look alive, make it look full, make it look nice and busy. So you'll want to go ahead and get out your detailing shulker boxes. I got one here. I got one here. I think I got another one somewhere else. Yeah, I got one right here, too. So we're going to break out our final detailing shulker boxes and we're going to make this place look absolutely amazing.
and here we have it it is all done at least for today like i said we're actually looking at rtx mode right now it's not going to look good at nighttime though it's going to be a dark mess so in the next episode i might squeeze in one episode in between we'll actually do an episode specifically on rtx lighting and use this area as our example of how to do it correctly how to properly light your builds but as we go through and take a look here, everything looks awesome. We've paid attention to a lot of details, even like throwing some trees and some grass and stuff in the back. I didn't go too crazy with the backside because we'll never see it. And I don't want to spend, you know, literally like weeks doing this area, uh, but it looks really good. Also, the interiors. Wow. Oh, gosh, we can't see. Uh, turn RTX off while are completely empty and we'll stay that way. They are like finished in a sense like they have a they have a ceiling they have a floor they have walls so um it's at least it's at least like faking it pretty good right but switching back to rtx mode everything looks good um i love how some of these areas really turned out where like which one is it like this one right here it has the three houses and that one's like really inset it really looks like everything flows and this is kind of what you should end up with as you finish everything up and you step back and look at things, especially if you're going for this kind of tight build where you, you want everything to feel like it's a really compacted in city or town or village or whatever it is you're building. This should really feel this way. And then you can just fill in those gaps like I did here with some of the shrubbery and some of the decorations just to, again, really give a tight feel as you try to go through places to make it really feel like you used up as much space as possible, like you would maybe expect the villagers to do themselves if they were actually living in this village. But that is going to be it for today's episode. I appreciate everybody being here. The channel has been doing fantastic. We are getting more subscribers now than we have ever gotten before. So thank all of you so much. If you're a newer subscriber here to the channel or if you're an older one, that's fine too. Um, please make sure you click that thumbs up button, like the video. Make sure you follow the Bedrock Guide series. Go back and catch it from episode one. Also, be aware that the Bedrock Guide episode two will be coming out when 1.18 launches. So make sure you have that notification button turned on that way you get notifications as soon as they come out again i appreciate all of your support and i hope you all have a great day bye